Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kitgu and today we are looking at the RTX 2060 Super and the 2070 Super. So these are new graphics cards from NVIDIA, we've been hearing a lot of rumours about these cards. They're two new cards from NVIDIA which are kind of specifically designed to take on AMD's upcoming Navi GPUs. So while they are kind of new cards in that we've not seen any super variants before or anything like that, what we've actually got under the hood isn't anything that we haven't really seen before. That's because for these super cards, Nvidia has effectively taken uh, GPUs that it already released uh, last year, essentially shaved off a few SMs and called it job done. So if we quickly look at the 2060 Super, for instance, this is based on the TU-106 GPU, which is also uh, used for the RTX 2070. So instead of being a full TU-106, it's got two SMs less. So in turn, what that means is it has 2,176 CUDA cores when compared to the standard RTX 2070 that has 2,304 CUDA cores. RTX 2060 also has 1920 CUDA cores, so you can see, despite the name, it's actually a little bit closer to the original RTX 2070 in terms of its on-paper specs. And that also means, yes, that the 2060 Super does indeed have 8GB of VRAM instead of 6. Moving now to quickly touch on the RTX 2070 Super, this is actually based on the TU-104 GPU, which is actually used for the RTX 2080. So where RTX 2080 has 46 SMs, the new 2070 Super actually has 40, which means it has 2,560 CUDA cores, which is slightly less than the 2,944 from the RTX 2080. Oh, so that's kind of a very quick, quick and dirty, I guess, overview of what the cards are themselves. But really, the point I'm trying to make is it's essentially GPUs we've already seen, but cut down in a new way to kind of give essentially what should hopefully be new levels of price to performance. So speaking of pricing, at the time of filming, I only have the US pricing in US dollars. So if we do get British pounds, the uh, kind of whatever it converts to later on, I'll put that in the description below. But that aside, it is pretty easy to see what NVIDIA is doing with its new Super cards. So the 2070 Super is effectively replacing the 2070 at that. Uh, the MSRP was $499. So when 2070 launched, it was $499, and now 2070 Super is $499. So it's a straight replacement, so that should mean better bang for buck. As for the 2060 Super, that is coming in at $399. So still between the 2060 and now the new 2070 Super at a kind of new price point. And I guess, if I can make a guess, in the UK that one will be £379, but we'll obviously have to wait and see. So that is kind of it for the introduction of these cards, and now we're going to dive straight into the performance. This is obviously what we're all here for. So in this video, I'm going to be showing 1080p and 1440p charts. We obviously did 4K testing as well, but if you want to find those charts as well as our full testing methodology, you can head over to the written reviews. We've got one review each for these cards, and that's over on our main site, which is www.kitguru.net. So then if we dive into the benchmarks now, 3D Mark testing actually sets the scene pretty well for these cards in that we see 2060 Super performing very, very close to the standard RTX 2070, falling a little bit short, but generally coming very close in terms of the Fire Strike and Time Spy scores, while 2070 Super sits kind of pretty much neatly in between the 2070 and the 2080. In fact, these trends hold out almost perfectly across the range of our games that we tested with. So starting with the 2060 Super, across all of our games, this essentially matches the performance of a reference clocked RTX 2070. It is generally maybe one or two frames per second slower across the board, but really nothing I think you'd notice when actually playing games with this card, and it is effectively the same. Obviously, we're testing with a reference clock 2070, so if you had a factory overclock card, the gap would probably be slightly bigger. But even so, on average, the 2060S is just 2% slower than the standard RTX 2070. As for the RTX 2070 Super, 
like we said, this one slots in pretty neatly between the 2070 and 2080 in terms of performance. It does vary a little, but actually across the games, it does tend to come in slightly closer to the 2080 than the 2070, but actually its closest competitor turns out to be the GTX 1080 Ti. That Pascal card proved to be slightly faster in some games, slightly slower in others, but on average, across the board, 1080 Ti is just 1% faster than 2070 Super. So that generally gives you a pretty good idea of what you can expect from this new card. So then kind of putting these cards into like a big picture overview, if we look at the 2060S, it is on average 14% faster than the original RTX 2060 and 2% 2 slower than the RTX 2070. RTX 2070 Super, meanwhile, is on average 12% faster than the original RTX 2070, yet it is also 7% slower than the original RTX 2080. As a final comparison between the two cards, 2070 Super is on average 15% faster than 2060 Super. So overall, that is pretty much it for the performance. It's maybe not the most exciting launch. Like we said, it's not a new GPU. There's no new architecture. NVIDIA has essentially taken existing GPUs we've already seen before and scaled them down for these super cards. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, as like we said, 2070 Super is faster than 2070, yet is now coming in at the same MSRP while 2060 Super, on the other hand, is effectively bringing what is basically RTX 2070 performance, but now at a new lower price. So while it may not be the most exciting thing in the world, you are getting better price performance than the products that previously existed at those price points. Just before moving on though, I do want to quickly look at one more performance metric, which is our card's clock speed. So both of these cards are reference clocks. So with the kind of whole RTX series, there's a bit of confusion about some founders editions are factory overclocked, some aren't. But for both the super cards, the founders edition are reference clocks, so they're not factory overclocked. 2060S therefore has a boost clock of 1650 megahertz, while 2070S has a rated boost clock of 1770 megahertz. As we would expect due to GPU boost, both cards do actually exceed these rated boost clocks by a fair margin. The 2060 Super averaged closer to 1780 megahertz, while the 2070 Super was actually averaging 1860 megahertz. So like I said, these are reference clock cards. There are gonna be a range of custom cards from board partners like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte. They'll all be coming out next week. So I would expect to see some very heavily factory overclock cards. But for now, those are the clock speeds for the reference Founders Editions. If we take a look at the Founders Edition cards themselves now, as it turns out, the GPU cores weren't the only thing that NVIDIA has reused. Essentially, the 2060S is using the same cooler as the original 2060, while the 2070S is using the same cooler as the RTX 2080. There are a few cosmetic changes though, you've probably already noticed that uh, the main thing really is this big mirror finish section kind of in between the fans on the two cards. On the previous designs, this was kind of black metal, but now it's this really glossy mirror finish kind of, I guess it's silvery section in between. So that will literally reflect anything. So I'm hoping it looks okay on camera now, but I'll show you some B-roll. It was just really ridiculously crazy reflective. So that's one cosmetic change. Uh, you also notice the green super logo that is again positioned in the middle of this reflective section, while there is also an extra green super logo on the back plates of each card as well. Aside from that, the cards are basically the same found editions that we have already seen before, though again, I really don't think that is a bad thing. Not only are the cards really well built, loads of aluminium, they feel really good in the hand, and they, I think personally they also look really good for reference designs. It should also help us with both the thermals and acoustics, which we'll touch on later on in the review. The last thing to touch on just before moving on is the power plug configuration. So for 2060S, it's just a single eight pin power connector, which is actually on the end of the card, just like the original 2060. And 2060S has a rated TDP of 175 watts. As for 2070 Super, this uses one six pin and one eight pin PCI power connectors, and that is rated for 215 watts. So then that is essentially it for our look at these cards designs, but how well do they do when it comes to GPU temperatures? 
Well, the 2060S is the coolest running card. That GPU peaked at just 70 degrees, while the 2070S is still relatively cool, running just 3 degrees hotter, with a peak temperature of 73 degrees. I would expect a range of aftermarket cards to come out in the coming weeks, which will probably improve on this by, you know, maybe a fair margin, but for reference cards, these do cool actually really quite well. It's a similar story when it comes to acoustics. Again, the 2060S is running slightly quieter. We saw it peak, I think it was, wasn't even 40 decibels uh, for the total noise emissions for this card, whereas 2070S was about two decibels louder. Even then, both cards are actually very, very quiet. If we compare back to the GTX 10 series, those found edition designs were a lot louder, and that's not even mentioning the AMD Vega reference designs, which are just ridiculously loud. So again, for reference cards, these ones are actually very easy on the ears. That being said, I really would like NVIDIA to implement a kind of fan stop mode because at the moment the fans continuously spin even when your system is basically idling or is just web, web browsing, whatever it might be. In light load situations, the fans do keep on spinning. So I really would like it if NVIDIA would implement a fan stop mode as I am certain these cards would be able to handle it. Moving on now to power consumption, this was again pretty much as expected considering the on-paper specs and the rated TDPs of each card. So measuring power for our system as a whole, with the 2060S installed we saw power draw just over 240 watts and this increased to just over 290 watts when we had the 2070S. So basically they do fit in where we would expect given that 2060S draws more power than 2060, but slightly less than a 2070, while 2070S slots in between 2070 and 2080. So basically no surprises there. Now then, the last area of performance I want to touch on is manual overclocking, and both cards did pretty much what we would have come to expect from a card based on the Turing architecture. So for the 2060S, we were able to add an extra 125 megahertz to the GPU core, while 2070S could add an extra 135 megahertz to the GPU core. So both overclocked about the same, and we could also get about an extra 900 megahertz to the GDDR6 memory of both cards. This extra frequency did see a rather large bump actually to the real world clock speed of both cards. Our 2060S was now averaging 1950 MHz under load, while our 2070S actually broke past the 2 GHz figure. I think it was averaging 2007 MHz under load. As expected, this extra frequency also brought some decent gains to our Fire Strike scores we saw. I think both cards increased by around 2000 points. And if we look at our games testing, which was done at 1440p, 2060S when overclocked moves well beyond the original RTX 2070, and an overclocked 2070S is effectively matching the original RTX 2080. So there is clearly decent headroom available for these cards. It's nothing more though than I would have expected given what we know about overclocking Turing cards, but still, like we said, decent performance gains are there to be had when manually overclocking. So then, that is pretty much it for the new 2060 Super and the new 2070 Super. Both cards, I have to say, are probably pretty much what I would have expected given the on-paper specs. RTX 2060 Super is effectively matching the performance of RTX 2070, while RTX 2070 Super basically slots pretty neatly in between the 2070 and the 2080. So while it may not be the most exciting thing, considering 2070S is replacing the 2070 at that same 499 MSRP, US dollars that is, you are getting a faster card on average by 12%, faster card than the 2070 for now the same money. Similarly, 2060S is effectively a 2070 when it comes to performance, and that is now at a new lower price point of $399. So for the consumer, it's definitely a good thing. It's not a massive leap in performance, but these cards are definitely better than what existed at those price points previously. That being said though, the launch of Super has definitely kind of made me think about NVIDIA's RTX pricing strategy as a whole, and its decision how it kind of populated its original product stack. My line of thinking is that with 2060 Super and 2070 Super, we're not seeing anything we haven't seen before. It's not a new architecture, Nvidia hasn't created any new GPUs for these cards. They're essentially using cut down versions of GPUs which we originally saw last year, like TU-106 came out in October, TU-104 debuted with the 2080 in September. So 
basically my line of thinking is why couldn't these cards have been what the original RTX products were? Both cards are using GPUs that Nvidia already had. They've just decided now in response to AMD's upcoming Navi cards to release slightly higher core count models of GPUs which it already had. So basically that makes me think why weren't these cards the original stack? We're obviously going to have to see what AMD's Navi GPUs can do with the 5700 and 5700 XT that is coming out very, very soon. But like we said, for now, NVIDIA Super is definitely better than the products which existed previously at the price points these cards are coming in. So 2070S is replacing 2070. Yeah, it's a win for the consumer, but it definitely makes me think, why couldn't these cards have been what the original RTX cards were? But anyway, that is really it for my review, guys. I'm Dominic Forkick Guru, and we've been looking at NVIDIA's 2060 Super and the 2070 Super. If you like this review, you can give us a thumbs up. Do leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Is AMD going to have anything in response to the Super cards? Is this now going to be too much for the upcoming Navi cards? I guess we're going to have to wait and see. If you like this video, you can also hit subscribe and hit that bell icon if you don't to miss any of our videos. And if you want to see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways, you can consider backing us on Patreon. Lastly, if you have been enjoying this t-shirt I've been wearing, we've got loads more Kit Guru merch. You can find the link in the description below and that would really help us out. But like I said, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru. We've been looking at 2060 Super and 2070 Super. I will see you in the next video.